All right, we are live. What's up, guys? How's everyone doing tonight? Do. <laughs> uh, I'm doing pretty well. How are you doing, Mr. Matt? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Finally trying to uh, recover a little bit from the weekend that that was Rhode Island. And probably more importantly, Luxburger. Ah, so good. So good. <laughs> that yeah, was definitely man. delicious. It was out. Please Creamo. tell me. Please tell me but, one of um, you got uh, fatty style. You know, I did not. I uh, I made the mistake and didn't go for it. I just uh, just could, didn't have it in me to try it. Oh man, I, I too much food. I could barely finish all the stuff that I had, anyways. But <laughs> um, <laughs> it is so much fun. All right. Well, for those of you who don't know, we have Matt Cosmore and Tyler Norris, two of the main people in the Force of Will United States scene. And I am Chris. I'm going to be moderating this discussion tonight, the first inaugural episode of Dark Depths Behind the Scenes. Woo! Uh, Yeah, it's awesome. (laughs) Yeah, it's going to be pretty sweet. So uh, for those of you in chat who have questions for these gentlemen... Uh, questions about Force of Will in general, or if uh, anything really, uh, I will be taking questions, handpicking them from the chat, and uh, having these guys answer for you. Uh, I see David Hartley is asking, who's Matt Cosmer? Nobody. What's up, What's up David? Nobody. <laughs> Good to see you, buddy. I know it's like 3 a.m. your time. Yeah, no, it's really great that he's deciding to join us tonight. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Oh man. All right. Well, uh, talk about uh, talk about Rhode Island, guys. T- tell me about what happened. You know what your experience was, and uh, uh, just let me just yeah, give us some details. We'll start with uh, Tyler. Uh, sure. Well, the flight was pretty long. I had like three connection flights, but it was okay. Rhode Island's a pretty awesome place. I. You know, my only big problem with Rhode Island is that I never want to leave trading cards out on a table. <laughs> Overnight, because it's it's ridiculous. The humidity and just like the wet that is Rhode Island. I, I left a f- foil out on a table, and I did not know that this would happen. I woke up and it was in this like U shape. I I was I I was almost in tears. It was so horrible. But um, going it was actually pretty pretty uh, nostalgic for me, um, because we're in the same convention center. That um, some people who know the game Kaijudo had its had its uh, champs in. It was uh, uh, so there was that, and um, I don't know. I, I, I for me it was a pretty new experience because I got to do scorekeeping, which oh, I would rather judge, but I still got to see a lot of the players and meet a lot of new people and friends and um, just like any of the GPS. It's incredible. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, Matt, you want to go ahead? Yeah, so I have to say that, you know, I had to work a half day and I rushed off to the airport. Uh, I got to my gate as they were boarding, so kind of a little more of a stressful stressful experience. And then I turn on my phone getting off the plane, and Rob, you know, Rob, Rob Rivera, our TO, our USA main guy, or Bert Bert, as I like to affectionately call him from time to time, um, he sends us a message saying his plane's delayed. He's oh, not going to make oh. it. <laughs> oh, I my God. Oh, my God. I forgot. lost my mind. You know, I turn on my phone. There's like 30 notifications. And Rob's like, guys, dead serious. Oh, my God. I'm not making it to Rhode Island. And just instantly, my heart drops. And I'm like, all right, um, we need to call Jim. We need to, you know, make some connections and uh, see what we can do to salvage this tournament. And uh, oh my God. lucky I for us. That. He ended up getting in town, I think, three hours later than what his flight was supposed to. He got the yeah, literal yeah, last. He got the literal last spot on one of the hotel on one of the planes for his uh, to get to where he was going to be. Otherwise, he would have missed the entire event. So yeah, that was super stressful. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. <laughs> but you know, outside of that, I think the event ran really well. Um, it was nice to go back into the room that I was known for yelling Kalima in, and uh, I'm sure Joe appreciated me yelling Kalima in that room again. And uh, you know, it really was just great seeing all the 
you know, a lot of people you know either through Kaiju or through other card games, um, Magic background yeah. for me personally. You know, it's just good to see all those friends again. So, you know, when we went to Providence, we we went in knowing that we'd see people like David Pendergrass and Corey G and Adam G and people like that we that we'd know through other card games or know through other friends. And it really was just great to get to hang out with everyone over the weekend again. So overall, I think it was uh, it was definitely pretty stressful uh, starting up, but <laughs> after that, it was pretty good. And uh, you know, I think if some of you guys might have followed it too, in the second day, I decided to. Uh, just finally take a break and I needed to, I wasn't feeling good at all. I was up to like 4.30 in the morning. I decided to play in the ARG Circuit Series event and I got to play against Burn four times in a row. Uh, that was <laughs> not a good experience. Not a good experience oh, whatsoever. Man. And uh, every time it was a uh, fatal movement for uh, like t a thousand plus. So I'm like, yep, I'm glad that that card got changed. Uh, how it should be, because for a common, that was a little too good as printed. Let's be I mean, honest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we had a couple of questions pop up in the chat. One of them was, what uh, card games did uh, you guys play before Force of Will? All right, go ahead, Matt. Sure. Um, so a lot of you guys might hear me talk about it from time to time, but I come from a competitive Magic Gathering background. I spent probably the past three and a half to four years playing on uh, – SCG opens, trying to play in PTQs, you know, playing my local store whenever I could, and traveling with people from my store to larger events. But uh, outside of that, we played Kaijudo. That's how I actually know both these guys uh, from it. And I also play uh, Weiss Schwartz. You know, I just actually picked that up right after getting into Force of Will. Um, it's just another game to play casually. You know, I really enjoy playing all trading card games. So if I can get my hands on it, if you can give me a deck, I want to learn how to play it, and I will play it. Yeah, for sure. Um, for me, um, I started with, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! back when I was a young, and as I got older, I went into Magic the Gathering, and I also did a, shor a sh shorter stint of, uh, Pokemon, uh, I also did Kaijudo, um, of course, Force of Will, and... And uh, I was trying to think: is there is there any other competitive card games I did? No, I think I don't think so. I uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Another other question I saw was: is there like a North American Force of Will office or like a headquarters? Um. Right, right now, there is not a headquarters or anything like that. It's mainly just the U.S. team of uh, Robert E. Bear, Mac Cosmore, myself, and. Akels or Mike Ellis, I don't know how to say his last name. I he keeps telling me, and I am horrible, and I always forget. So, Chris, <laughs> if you're watching this, I am so sorry that I am slaughtering your lap. And so, mainly, uh, Robert is like our overlord. He controls like everything in the United States. And then there's Matt that takes care of like the judging side and like the judge test. Um, he's the head judge and does all that fun stuff. And he's essentially the community manager in the face of the community. Well, no. And I am the assistant to Robert. I literally do whatever he tells me, and usually everything you can think of is the one that I have to do. Like, give the prize support to fourth place at the <laughs> GPs. I tell you right now, that is the worst. That is hand, hands down the hardest job on the is team. Tr is is <laughs> trying to hand pieces of cardboard to a player that is basically crying them thanks for playing you can't go to japan have these cards <laughs> oh my gosh and and then there's chris who media guy he writes all of our articles he's written over 30 articles i can't say enough about the guy for how busy his schedule that he finds time to get in touch with these write all this stuff to try and provide the community and do all this stuff yeah hands down chris busts his ass it's great yeah. Um, let's see what we got here. Uh, Azure Hale wants to know how did you guys l first learn about Force of Will? Let's start with uh, Tyler this time. Uh, go ahead. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, um, uh, so the if you guys the pa the U.S. page was was um, his name is Joshua Heater, and I'm actually like was personal friends with him um, back. 
back in Kaijudo is where I actually originally met him. And he just he sent me a random PM one day and it was just like, hey, I hear I've heard about this game overseas called Force of Will. I mean, I th- he's like, it's coming to America and it seems like it might be a cool game to get into. And that was back in dis- the, the December before the February release. So that's where I first heard about it. And then he actually t- told me about Lackey. And that's where I first started playing some games on there. Um, and that's when he decided that he's like, hey, hey, there isn't a main United States group for this. I'm going to make one. Do you want to be a part of it? So I was like, sure. So he created the page, invited me, and that's... I've literally been for the United States I've been here since the very beginning it was it's been an amazing experience from the beginning I love the game it's, it's great yeah uh, man yeah and, uh, for me I think I'm sure I remember how Rob even got involved again but he made some random post on Facebook um, you know hey I'm getting these demo decks and you guys should probably try it out I think this game is going to be you know it's really going to be something and you know at that time it was it was right after Kai. Well, I shouldn't say right after Kai Judo died, but it was you know while we were still mourning and uh, pretty close, perfect, yeah, close enough. <laughs> um, and you know, I, I was playing Magic at the time, but I knew I couldn't get Chris to play Magic because uh, you know there, it is there is a pretty good barrier to entry as far even from standard format. You know, you're looking to spend four to five hundred bucks for a competitive standard deck, maybe three hundred, um, which is actually now kind of on the fence about Force of Will about that top tier price. But anyways, I knew I couldn't get Chris into it, so I'm like, look. I really enjoy the Kaijudo team that we had more than anything else. To this day, the Kaijudo team has still been my favorite trading card game team that I've been a part of. And I was like, all right, well, I can't get Chris into playing uh, Magic the Gathering, but I have a feeling I can probably get him into Force of Will. So um, once I saw the video that Rob put out, you know, <laughs> the artwork looks pretty sweet. It had a lot of ma- the Magic feel to it. You know, as soon as I got my first hands on the demo decks and I got to play the game, I was like, all right, I'm snap going to invest as much as I can into this game and support it as much as I can. And, uh, yeah, here I am today, some short months later, had no idea where I'd, that this is where I'd be at. So it's been a... So yeah, and, and, sure. it, anyone that wants to be, uh, you know, glad to see me doing everything that we're doing, you can thank this guy uh, right above me in my Skype chat, uh, Chris, for being the re- basically being the reason that I got into this game to begin with. Oh. <laughs> if you guys want to, uh, you want to go see, you can go to... The for the U.S. YouTube channel and click on like our first ever video and see uh, <laughs> when we made a video like two weeks before the set came out talking about the grim close to rulers and how good they're going to be. Uh, I believe David Hartley was featured in that video as well. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, uh, speaking of David Hartley, uh, he wants to know. He's asking Matt any hints for the big changes or or any big changes or things happening in September for the start of season two. Ooh, um, hmm. I am personally very, very excited for a lot of stuff that is coming in the fall set, and I really wish I could tell you guys, but I can't. But the one thing I will say is that I know a lot. Not a lot of people are using standby as right now, but there's uh, there's gonna be a pretty nice incentive to using your standby in the fall, and uh, that's about all I'm gonna say. All I can say about it for right now, but <laughs> look forward to. Uh, Look forward to using your standbys in the fall a lot more. So that's uh, I'm very happy with Can't. the direction that Force of Will has taken. You know, for for a little while there, I was worried about that. It was just it really felt too similar to Magic for me. But with the Regalia, that really pushes more of the focus towards the J Rulers and well, the Fall Regalia because you know, spoiler, there's more coming. Um, the Fall Regalia really does an excellent job at pushing it back towards like, okay, this is your J Ruler. This is the focus. This is where the main you know, part of your deck should be, uh, and then some of the very interesting uh, design changes that they're making with standby and a few other things that are coming out really make me happy for the fall set. So, um, you know, there's been a couple different times where we, where we always, you know, the game's been going under a lot of changes, and as we introduce the entire American market to it, it's going to be expected. But every time we have these major changes, like we did with the uh, standby changes, like oh, now we can play Force Will a whole new way. Well, expect that level of a change up coming in the fall. Uh, it's definitely a lot to be excited about. Awesome! I uh, I'm super hyped about Alice Cluster starting in the fall. Um, I'm down to my last question chat, so you need to start typing out some more questions. My uh, the last question I have in chat right now is from Jay's Grader. Do you guys think Force of Will needs larger sets, and will they eventually get there? 
Uh, let's start with Tyler since he hasn't talked in a while. Mm, um, oh, wow. in in terms of larger sets, I I don't think so. Um, it, my personal opinion is that I don't think so, mainly because as a lot of people have noticed that with the small as um, Millennium of Ages, but with the other sets, um, that the cards in them, uh, there's a lot more playable cards in the small. I mean, the larger sets like Magic the Gathering, unfortunately, not to like say that the game is bad or anything, but the crap cards that they just print that are just like, oh, here's this card. It's never going to see any kind of play and it's going to be terrible forever and everyone will hate it forever or it'll turn in the community for decades <laughs> so I personally enjoy like these medium sized sets and even I like the flavor of them making one small set and doing this kind of rarity it's kind of an interesting splash I don't know if I'd like it, but I, I do like sets like 1, 2, and 3 like their size, I felt was like just right, um, and we're gonna have a lot of cards for um, for competitive play once Atlas starts getting like going. And yeah. but yeah, I think it's I think it's a, in a happy spot. And and launching off that, I think that's other thing people uh, need to focus on as well. With New Frontiers, we're going to be going from a spot where when Grim Cluster came out in America, we were only working with two sets. Well, now going forward, we're going to be working with a minimum of five sets because we'll have all of one cluster plus the first uh, set of the new cluster. So we'll have a minimum of, what is it, 525 cards to work with uh, going forward. Vin Golf. Plus, plus, plus Vin Golf. Oh, yeah, whatever kind of deck builder uh, tools that they come out yeah. with as well, which definitely do add a lot, and I think is a really smart move by the company just for how well the game is done and how much growth it's you know experienced in the United States. We really need to see something um, that can welcome in new players and give them a starting point. So I I personally love being able to buy three boxes and get play sets of everything, and I hope that never changes. Oh my god! Oh my god! I hope that never change. changes. <laughs> god. But yeah. I will chase Stampies for life. If force forceful, if you can. Keep doing one thing, please. Yep. Please give me my stampies. I will forever get a place out of all those as well. You they know, did I'm something at... like it. Like if they did something like Walking had the, the size of the. S- <laughs> like if they did the size of the set, like um, Crimson Moon's Fairy Tale, but then just like through the chance to pull stamps in them, I would be happy. I'd be so <laughs> pumped. I wouldn't even know what to do. I would probably buy way too many boxes and waste a whole. Totally worth it. I mean. Yeah. Matt just likes walking into Gamers Gauntlet and going, two cases, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was definitely... Uh, I had never bought so much product in my life, and that was definitely a, uh, a huge gamble um, that I just got very lucky with. And I think uh, a lot of the community, I just got to thank, be thankful for that because I think that a lot of people just knew my Stampy addiction was real and <laughs> wanted to help me out a little bit. But uh, I definitely... Problems I, will help. <laughs> right. I definitely think the next step, though, is, and, and I honestly, I what I would be completely honest, I 100% do not know this to be a fact. I'm not trying to drop a, like, a soon or anything, but how absolutely insane would it be if they did stamp for rulers? I'm just throwing that out there. Like, that has got to be, I could definitely see that happening if Force of Will wants to continue with the, with the design of it and keep giving people <laughs> stuff to chase for. Because I promise you, if there's a if there's a stamp version of some cards that I know that are coming out in the fall, I will do anything to get my oh. hands on them. Oh my gosh, <laughs> absolutely anything. I'm uh, be... I'm pretty excited. Yeah, that would be insane. I would love. To... Alrighty, um, next question's from where did it go? Oh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Lance to be reassured. He thinks that Regal. He is going to be too strong as a card type. He wants to be. He wants to be proven wrong. Um, <laughs> you know, I would like to tell you that they're going to be not as strong as everyone is going to say that they are. But um, yeah, they're pretty strong. They're going to be strong. <laughs> um, however, I will say that even though the regalia are going to be very strong. I do believe that they're going to open up opportunities for other rulers that um, could be considered too slow or have 
lower survivability, now giving them a chance to actually have an impact on the game. And it's definitely, I mean, it's bringing the game also kind of back, like, like definitely pulling away from my, like Magic the Gathering and just being like, your ruler is like, I don't know, like represents you. It's like an almost like an avatar that is coming out to fight for you. And it's like, it's, it's what, I don't know, in my opinion, it's something that you want to have. It's like I'm. It's like I, I. Me personally, I don't want to be just resting my Shaharazad for a mana every turn for the entire game and never actually deactivating. For sure. So sorry. What's that? You mean Vlad? Vlad tapping every turn? <laughs> see, see. That's why I'm never gonna play Vlad. It's because I'm gonna want to use the Regalia. I'm gonna want a swift, like swiftness to my rulers and have them come out hard charging. It's or give them imperishable. I think it's going to be great. Or be able to make my Alice a 900-900. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. we got a lot of questions coming in now. Uh, the Adam, what decks are you expect at Gen Con this weekend uh, with the introduction of Vingo Offense? Oh, God. Vlad's burn. on. Vlad's on Vlad's. <laughs> Vlad and Burn. Just, that's it. Uh, well, I honestly, I honestly think it's going to be cause, well, mainly because the hype has happened so much for Vlad. I think there's going to be Vlad burn. There's going to be Vlad control, and people are going to be like afraid to play anything else. And uh, unfortunately, I mean, I, I I completely disagree with that. I think there's a lot of viable decks out there that people could play that they're just going to have to test. Like I know there's this one deck that a certain group of Rhode Islanders are doing with a certain little. Little one drop from the Ben Golf set. Can't touch this that deck. Set. Don't I don't want to hear about that. Oh, oh man. it's um hopefully some of the Rhode Island guys that have been working on this deck do get to come down to Houston to try and showcase this deck. Cause I mean I don't want to spoil it for them because because it's it seems like a fantastic idea. Yeah. And they're not using it as their ruler and it's great. It was, it was me. Oh. But, uh, yeah, I definitely think that there's a lot to gain out of Engage Nights, and there's going to be, you know, a good opportunity for new players to get into it, but I'm really hoping that people step away from the obvious choices and see what there might be to gain for other uh, rulers that we've had in the past. Um, you know, the the long-going joke that I keep hearing is that Wolf Girl is going to come back to top tier just because you can, you can activate the Regalia, banish it to give it uh, uh, your J-Ruler Imperishable, flip Wolf Girl into her J Ruler's side, and then if they flames her or thunder her, you still get her back. So there's a lot more survivability that we're going to have in rulers um, that I think will make things a little bit more interesting. Yeah. Um, next question. They are coming in, and I'm trying to keep. We're, you know what? We're going to be up online all night if we don't get moving. Um, okay, I'll we'll answer quickly, more more quickly. <laughs> David Hartley is asking so out of so far out of the US players who've qualified who do you think will do best at Worlds in Japan? I'd be able to qualify. Let's see. So there is Tyrone, Stephanie, um Ryan Valentino, Ryan, Robert Ryan. Boysian, uh God, now I'm going to uh, draw a blank on Vin names Vincent well. Vincent Paglia, Sin or uh, let's see Taylor Norris. There's Kevin. Let's see. In my opinion, I'd say Robert Boyajin. That's all be my pick. <laughs> um, as long as he gets his passport done and in and can go. He better. Um, the dude had picked up the game like that day and then performed as well as he did. I mean, he was doing some fantastic plays. Yep, the guy has uh, Zeke's map was spot on. I like the the dude was doing some some kind of like amazing plays, and I'm not discrediting any of the other players. Watching him, it was just it was something kind of di just different to watch. That I think he could, I think he could do very very well as long as he can perform the way the way he did, um, and he only took third place. Also. What is it? Ken Tober? I think Ken Tober is an amazing yep. player as well. 
I think those guys could do like extremely well. And I, but I do think that the the level of play between all of the United players in that top eight, like there's not much that separates them from each other. Sometimes it's just a bad hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they all do pretty well. Yeah, and uh, my pick is more of one that I just, um, af- after watching her play at, um, in Providence this past weekend, again, talked to her a little bit more, and just knowing the impact it would have on the game, you know, I really want to give a lot of credit to Stephanie Shaw. Uh, for being the first female player to qualify for Worlds. Um, I mean, someone might have to double-check that in case there was some Japan contestant that I wasn't unfamiliar with. Um, but I, I absolutely want nothing more than her to win Worlds because... Oh, uh, that would be... Just, that would be dope. Just the exposure <laughs> that that would create, not only for the game, but also would be a huge, huge you know, accomplishment for any U.S. player, of course. I think it would just be... Uh, just would be, hands down amazing growth for yeah. the game. It would be. I really hope she does take down the entire event. So um, that is my personal pick for Worlds. And sorry for people that are watching my webcam just decided to cut out, but hopefully everything else is still coming through all right. Yeah, I just see your beautiful picture face. I, mean, I was wondering where you went. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. We can um, look at Tyler's beautiful mug. <laughs> Um, uh, go ahead with the next question, Chris. Yeah, sure. So next question is uh, it's directed more at Matt and me, I guess. It says, looking back at some of your first videos, what were you dead wrong on 100%, like based on like our old hype videos or ruler predictions and stuff like that? Um, uh, werewolves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That. <laughs> to be fair, though, like I mean, I could... S- Still was doing really well with locals, like right before uh, NPR came out. Like I remember, I would give that deck to a random player, and they would casually go like four oh five oh with it. So I think there were still some strengths there. Um, the one that sticks out to me was me quoting Dark Pandora, like quote unquote not being good enough. It should have a bigger body when all you really care about is the discard effect. Yeah, um, I remember and, talking about that. And the other biggest one would be Alice. Uh, just because we're like, I don't know how to build this. What do we actually do with this card? Uh, I, I was wrong. I was wrong about Alice as well. But yeah, dark fire Alice and causing a three for one for your opponent is is pretty good value. <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree with that. Like we, we obviously we made those first videos before the game even came out in America. So yep. <laughs> and we, only, and we only had the first two sets, um, but we were right. That Grim and it were going to be amazing. Yep. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. Uh, we definitely weren't right about a lot of things, though, and it's just funny to look back on that stuff. All right. Next, we have a question. Uh, will anyone from the team be at ARG Philadelphia? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. Nope. I think it's going to be one of the ones where no one's going to be there. Because that's, that's this weekend, isn't it? No. I believe... Oh, no. Is it next? It's the weekend after Gen Con. I don't even know when it is. I'm pretty sure it's the weekend after Gen Con. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm sorry, but... <laughs> do you need a one weekend off? <laughs> yeah. You guys have been traveling all over the place. I think they uh, deserve some rest, but... I'm sure ARG Philly will have some great judges. <laughs> it's and, little... uh, it'll be fine. Um, what's next? Says, do you believe we should mix and match Grim Cluster events with New Frontiers because the starter is such a limited addition to the set to represent Alice? Um, what do you mean by that question? We new Grim is still part of New Frontiers. I think that it was just more pointed towards waiting on Alice clusters, the starter decks, but. You know, my biggest incentive for making them legal now is that we don't want to have the starter deck, you know, finagle that we had when the game came out. I want players to go into a store, look, hey, I hear about this game, Force of Will, what do I do? Oh, there's a starter deck? All right, cool, I'm going to buy that starter deck. And I want players to be able to have that experience and say, okay, I can play tonight with this if I want to, you know, sleeve it up and play. 
instead of having players going to the situation where right. like, oh, you just spent 30 bucks on this, but it's not legal until September. So right, right. I think the best thing that we can do for the game is to encourage players, you know, if you want to learn about Borsa Will, find a friend, spend 15 bucks, you each get a, you know, you each get a deck and play. And you can sign up in your local events for five bucks and learn more about the game that way. So I definitely think that allowing them, you know, as soon as possible is going to be the right uh, right thing to do. Did uh, did Tyler's webcam just die too? Yeah, I think Tyler quit there for a minute. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, Tyler has internet's been failing him today. No, uh, I, I'm 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 back. Sorry, I um. Oh yay! I'm not alone. I I was getting I was getting some lag, so I was trying to like see if I could do any kind of correcting on it, but I don't know. We'll see if anything. I can switch to another computer real quick, but yeah. Anyways, welcome go to ahead. episode yeah, one and well. trying <laughs> trying this all out. Um, all right. Uh, is there a plan to expand OP to include more than regionals that will still create a large draw of player base? Yes, but we can't talk about that right now. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> the, the one thing that we can definitely say uh, that Tyler and I, well, the team in general, all of us got to experience is that, you know, in the month that we were playing the regionals from, you know, day one of the month to day 30 or 31 of the month, so much has changed, so I can promise you that there are things that are coming out people want to, you know, get the focus back on, let's say, the state level or have new opportunities for people who don't have necessarily the opportunity to travel across states and still have something to look forward to at their local events. So that's that's something that we all have plans for, but if it actually happens for Season 2, we'll see. Now, the thing to note is that ARG does have their kits um, that you can buy at your store level. They, you know, have certain uh, playmats that go with them. They have prize point structures, which gets you uh, qualified for their national event. There's stuff that, that you know you can do that way, but uh, there's definitely going to be some changes coming up to organized play for Force Will specifically. Hang on, uh, in second, season guys. Two. I will be right back. Sure thing. Um, let's see if there's a question you can have Matt answer while Tyler's gone. Uh, uh, Matt, what can you tell us about the world judge system and testing system that is in the works? Um, I um, wish. Guys, I'm gonna... oh. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm gonna switch to another computer real quick so I can get rid of some of this lag. Hope. Sure. Okay, sure. That has a hardline connection, so I'll be right back. Um, you know, as far as the world judge program, there's not much that can be said about it right now. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of things that I think that's, uh, some we're going to find out a lot more, uh, after Worlds is done and once a lot of people, you know, the regional leads meet up and figure out what's going to be the best step going forward. But, you know, as soon as we know, I can promise you that we're going to be letting everyone know as soon as we can. Matt, you still there? Yep, I can hear you now. Okay, and we're having yeah, we're having some technical issues, but uh, I think you answered the question. It kind of timed me out for a second. Yep, we're good. And Rob just joined us in the Twitch chat, which who <laughs> who was driving through yeah, Mississippi. <laughs> he also asked. Rob also asked, why the hell do you guys snore so damn loud? You know, I can't. I can't help it. And uh, yeah. Because I do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there hey, he guys. is. Uh, by the way, spoiler alert, Matt Cosmer's microphone or uh, camera isn't working because he's naked right now. <laughs> yep, that's that exactly it, guys. Confirm. He did say that before. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. All right. Um, okay, so a question. Uh, it's a long question. I'm I'll try to paraphrase it here real quick. So it says, we have a large player base in Toronto with no direction, uh, and he's worried about the longevity of the game in Canada. Any plans for Force Will US to start organizing large events in bigger Canadian cities? Um, there was a group that were going to fly out to British Columbia for Rob's or, uh, Rob Gruber's event, but then they found out it was sealed. 
right. In terms of Canada, well, the whole process of Canada has been, like, very new and very sudden. And it's, like, really, I mean, love that the game has gotten bigger there, except I, ha I mean, personally, I haven't gotten any information back from Robert A. Bear who would know better how to answer that question. So, sorry to kind of dance around it, but I can't answer that properly. <laughs> uh, Robert is saying uh, to have the stores in Toronto contact him ASAP. So that's a good news. That's a good sign. Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, when in doubt, contact Rob Hebert. You'll... No, Rob Hebert. Oh, Rob Hebert. Uh, oh, is he in the thing? Yeah, he's in the... He yeah, joined Rob the Hebert's in the chat right now. Oh, so, um, that's a legend. <laughs> if, uh... Gosh, Charlie, I was just talking to them. So if anyone from Card Advantage is watching, this is your... Uh, shout out to Josh from Card Advantage. Definitely talk to Rob. is going to be your best bet. I know we were coordinating about... An event that's coming up with you guys, but you know Rob is going to be your your biggest ally in pushing things in Canada. Yeah, he's yeah, most definitely. He's he is gonna he is the yeah. go to guy for any kind of pressing for this continent. Um. So next question talks about asks about organized play again, and they want to know when do you think we will see official organized play for lack of a better example, weekly tournaments with like a DCI number type system. <laughs> Soon. <laughs> <laughs> Soon. Uh, um, I, you know, I really hate saying it, but there's there's a lot of stuff, like even reporting software, foul IDs, dare I say willpower rewards. I hope that comes really That's soon. Something. You know, these are all things that are in development in the background, and, you know, we really don't have any other, other information on that. Yeah, some very right small tentative timelines, but... I mean, trying to get hard answers like that probably won't happen until, like, maybe, maybe in when, uh, in September when uh, Robert A. Bear gets to go to Japan to talk to, talk to the company. Maybe then something could happen uh, about finding hard answers for that. But right now it's kind of speculation. Yeah. Um, what's next? I have my little list over here. Uh, do you think the U.S. players will have a fighting chance at Worlds compared to the other countries? Oh hell yeah! Oh one hundred percent. Oh hell yeah! I mean, we have the largest. We easily have the har like one of the largest player base, if not the largest player base in the entire world. I've personally watched hours and hours and hours of these people playing, judging them on the floor. And the, the, United, the United States player base is nothing to scoff at. And anyone that underestimates the United States player base for these people that are going to be traveling across across the, 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 the big pond, watch out. They might just surprise you. Yeah, I it, don't think that's even a real question. <laughs> I say it definitely helps when we already have a world champion for a card game going to world. So just throwing yeah. that out there. Maybe he'll be a world champion in two card games. Wait, which one was that? Uh, Robert. Yeah. He's a world champ for uh, Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh really? Yup. If you uh, <laughs> Casu casually, if you look at the uh, article that Chris did for the website, it has this really nice uh, world uh, world trophy. That, uh, that nope. looks pretty yeah. sweet. So, you know, ca casually world champs. No big deal. Now he's playing Force of Will. U.S. powerhouse. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, probably got about five minutes left, so let's try to get a couple more questions in. Yeah, I got about three or four more. And they should be quick. Uh, Tyler, uh, Taylor Norris wants to know how, uh, how does it feel to be dead to him? Um, that you didn't I pick felt him as I felt that I that when I answered the question about who I thought was the best, my my best pick, that he would be watching and he would say that to me. <laughs> so I can say that I saw this coming, and he'll probably grill me about this for like the next couple weeks, and I'm completely worth okay with it. But still, st st still love you, B. <laughs> um, and then people want to know. Uh, what's bad beats story where you just got like absolutely crushed like a beaten puppy? Oh, us or that we've seen? Uh, 
What'd you say? I didn't, I didn't hear you. I oh, that. oh did, did it lag me out? It said, uh, uh, what's your worst bad beats story where you just got absolutely crushed in a card game? Oh, where I absolutely got crushed in a card game? Anyone, either of you. I mean, this is pretty much any game that Chris and I play, and we're at a local event that actually matters. Um, Chris is just the champion dream crusher for me in trying to play the win it in for top eight or any kind of, you know, within the last two rounds of Swiss. So it's like, yeah, this is probably like a 50, you know, 50-50 match or 60-40. I totally have a chance. And then Chris just will casually dream crush me 2-0, like no contest. He's knocked me out of uh, two Kaijido top eights that way, if not three. And uh, proceeds to crush me in force of will. Um, me personally, I don't really have any like soul crushers. I mainly just either lose or I win. I don't really have any of those. But I do have two small, two quick stories that I've wa- that I witnessed for judging in force of will. Uh, <laughs> one of them was for. Uh, she was a Kajudo girl, uh, Kathy Boatman, at the Chicago <laughs> Regional. <laughs> she was sitting at 2,000 life going into her opponent's draw phase, and he uh, draws a card off the top, and he just and he looks at his hand, he's like, huh, four thunders you for game? <laughs> <laughs> and and it was I, th- I I can't remember what she said. But I think it was it was like game three, and she just got like hosed horribly by four thunders. And then the other one, the, by the, this one was absolutely disgusting. I believe it was his name was uh, Zach Kehoe. He was he's an AR, he's he's an ARG Circuit Series guy who's been performing pretty well with his uh, uh red gr- like that red twenty stone red grim deck. And in his list, he he put in two Ame no Habakiru, or whatever the, the hell the sword is. And he was like, I think he was like behind in the match or whatever. And he had just a Kai on board. And he goes, sword, sword, duel of truth. And so it went from 12 to 16 to 20. And he snapped 4,000 life to some dude in one turn and killed him. Jeez. Wow. It's just, just like open hand smack that off your is, chair. That card is absolutely bonkers. Yeah, that's that sword is. I mean, if you want to, pl- if you want to play that sword, it's never have a doubt in your mind that it's not absolutely bonkers. That card is busted. Yeah. Um, and about Oz promos, what happened to them? Some stores didn't get them. Uh, mainly from what I've heard personally is that it's like some kind of weird distribution issue. The fact that there's just so many distributors in the United States that they kind of, that they, I, I can't speak for how they distribute them, but I know some distributors didn't ship them out. Some did. So some stores did get them like my local, my, my small local got some, but, and it, and it had nothing to do with me being part of the U S team. It just like, it just happened. And I don't know. It, it's kind of weird. I believe that they're working towards getting those distributed more effectively, but I, you pretty much have to have your store contact the distributor to ask about them to if you really want to have a, a snowball's chance at getting those. Yeah. Um, two more questions. Uh, how far ahead does for- Force of Will development research and development work, and do they like already have the 2016 cluster decided on? Uh, that we don't have any insight to, and if we did, we couldn't say anyways. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that's, you yeah. know, while we're doing a lot for the company in general, and we have a lot of, you know, we're on a lot of the up and up, um, the only person who might know is Rob. Um, yeah, Rob Rob said there's several sets ahead, but that's all he said. Yeah, so yeah. if anyone's going to say it's Rob, and he's I mean, the only if you really want to grill someone for information, Robert has the keys to the kingdom on that one. So. Yeah, he's he's been answering some questions for us in chat. Well, that's good. Right. Th- thank um, you, Rob. Wait, last Rob, time. why aren't you sleeping? The man never sleeps. He really doesn't. I'm going to tell Carol. Um, and then uh, last question that we're going to have for tonight uh, is, why do you think Bloody Moon has not been utilized for punishing greedy stone bases? Um, I think it's slow. In this game, it's slow. Three mana, 
three mana. I mean, if you're playing a deck that's playing red, um, nine times out of ten, you'd rather just play a Lugaru and just deal with the consequences of it possibly being removed than play a three drop, sack it off, have nothing to show on your board, and pop a stone that might be nothing when the next turn they could just go tap my ruler for stone, play a Gretel, stone, and be completely back where they were. Meanwhile, you're set back almost two turns by not progressing your board. Yeah. However, if there was, like, a Campanella for Bloody Moon, I'd tell you right now that it would be seen, like, hella play. I think it's interesting to note, though, because um, I know Stephanie had three in her... Th yeah, three in her list. Um, what? Yeah, she had three in her sideboard. I, wa I, I also I, I want to I want to actually talk to talk to that girl and see if she actually ever sided those bad boys in. Well, next week I know that she can speak yeah, a little bit more out. to it. Um, oh, really? Yep. Sneak peek for you guys. Um, but I do know that it's actually a really good sideboard card uh, for the greedy, greedy dark Pandora list that are trying to hit their light. Um, and if you're playing that mirror match, a lot of it can be that extra turn of tempo can decide the game in itself. So. Uh, I can't remember if she explicitly said that she brought them in, but she felt that it was a very, very, you know, worthwhile sideboard slot, and I definitely have to agree with her there, because I think it's a fantastic sideboard card if you're playing it in the right deck for the right matchups, but it's I mean, definitely one of those things where it probably only goes in the sideboard of one, maybe two decks. Yeah, I mm -hmm. mean, po I mean, and I could, I could understand it in the Dark Pandora list, because, I mean, when you're going up against an Abdul list, you're going to want to pop their feet sing, or you're gonna want to pop their grubalesta. Otherwise, you're you. I, I mean, you could literally just get your ha ass handed to you if they flip over that grubalesta early. Because I think most Dark Pandora players are just like, please God, let that be the stone that's on the bottom of their deck of their yeah. stone deck, yep. right? Though it would also feel pretty good if you're running Bloody Moon to see it be their first stone and be like, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's their first stone and you're on the play and you played and you played an Elvish Priest turn one, sure. Taste it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But uh, it's also like, if that, that Pendergrass played at uh, Rhode Island becomes a thing, like Mooshdart is going to be a stone you want to get the heck out of there. Oh yeah. man, I'll tell you right now, to to quote to quote Dave Fendergrass, he, he ranched many kids <laughs> with with the, with the uh, Moose Dart Susan combo. Apparently, it was absolutely bonkers. Like, and he wasn't running. I don't think he was running the sword. I think he was just know. playing just Susan, and was just like I was a, face. I was about to call Dave Fendergrass and be like, "Thank you for making a Joan of Arc deck, so I can have fun playing Joan of Arc again." Right, and what's really great <sighs> yeah. is it's. Is uh, he kept the same colors that the, the like good like the good Joan of Arc lists like the, the control esque ones? It's like the same color has kind of always been there, except he just incorporated mm -hmm. these new cards in in a wonderful way. I don't I don't remember if it was him that if he actually built the deck, or if it was Corey or his other friend Kevin. But those those that there's a like group of guys out in Rhode Island where. They like build this uh, build a deck. They hand it to Dave, and he pilots it like a king. I mean, the guy is an amazing pilot, and mm -hmm. I mean, he was a thousandth of a percent from being in top eight. And if that Joan of Arc list would have made a top eight, I don't even know what could have happened. He, yeah, for all I know, he could have taken it down. Yeah, yeah. I'll be honest. I'm gonna be building that, his list myself with a couple changes after you know talking to him for a little bit because i just love uh inquisition since the game came oh, out inquisition has been so one of my good. favorite spells and yeah so good the, yeah and so yeah the turn exactly. four play you can do is uh oz into inquisition into tap oz and kill your dude and that's just such I, an insane tempo play oh my god uh, he was telling and the thing of it is is probably if you rewind the game about three months ago so many people were like oh i i don't like oz in my joan of arc lists I mean, that was all over the US, the U.S. pages. Like, oh, I don't yep. like Oz. I'd rather play Gardia so I can guarantee my stones. Oh, I don't like this. But then it's, I mean, Dave did a wonderful job of, sh of showing that Oz is a king in Joan of Arc. And with Inquisition, it's like the closest thing to tempo that this game is allowed to have, apparently. <laughs> oh, so I actually want to bring up to you guys. Um, do you think that Alice's Pursuit, with how popular Susan was... 
um, over this weekend could actually become a viable sideboard card. Wait, Alice's Pursuit? Yeah, the one, dro the one drop feel bad tempo card that got changed to five or greater. Uh, it could be. I definitely think that there's uh, a lot of cards that are five plus that we do care about. The, pro the bigger problem is that a lot of them have swiftness too. So, yeah, you're, I you're mean, gonna set them back not as much as you would, uh, you know, with a normal te tempo card where they pass their turn and goes back to them. Okay, now I can swing. Like, no, I'm gonna bounce it to your hand. And you have to, you know, play it again. Where they they just have a sw swiftness opportunity at their hands. But I do think that's a card that we kind of all wrote off because we felt terrible about it, but could see more play. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I don't know. I mainly have this kind of false hope that a card like that that has still tempo to it could possibly be a thing because Susan was... I, I think I think that Susan Noel was, like, definitely in, like, the top five cards for the weekend, performance-wise. Just throwing it out there, I heard more people complain about uh, Nartholep, the Usurper, uh, complain more about that card than Split Heaven and Earth this weekend. Well, apparently yeah. some people forget that that uh, being able to like steal a card with wheels is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the Alice's Pursuit also like uh, Blazer, the original Blazer from NPR, is not going anywhere. That card's still really good. Oh my god! And and like once it's on the board, you can't kill it anyways. So like you might as well bounce it back to their hand for one and draw a card, right? Like, Yep. And it helps you help. once you get the counter spell. It's better than death. It. It's better. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Well, we've gone minutes over now, about 10 minutes over, so I think we should probably <laughs> wrap it up. Um, but I hope that everyone watching enjoyed the inaugural episode of Deaths. And uh, any closing comments, guys, before we head out of here? Uh, you can go first, Matt. Nope. I just want to say thanks for everyone hanging out in the chat. Thanks for checking out. You know, next week we're going to hopefully have uh, some finalists on the stream as well. Uh, we just have to work out the logistics of having better quality control or better, you know, streaming capabilities coming to you guys for the next episode. But I really do appreciate everyone coming out, and we're going to again try to make this a weekly thing. It probably won't be a set day per se of the week, but we're going to definitely try to do it at least once a week. Uh, yeah, like, like Matt said, thank you guys so much for coming out. We really appreciate it. Hopefully we answered some of the questions that you guys were looking for answers for. And definitely look forward to getting to, to actually talk with some of these players and get, get inside their heads about what they're thinking with their plays and like their experience and uh, what they think of the game. And I don't know, it's going to be really fun doing this series. And I look forward to the next episode. And thank you. So thanks everyone for watching. And thank you, Chris and Matt, for taking time to to put this all together and to do this. It's great. Yep. Thank you, Chris, for being the moderator. Hey, yeah, of course, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, questions for next week, guys, and we'll uh, see you on the next one, Dark Depths. Peace out. Thanks, right. guys. Have a good one.